Hello! Well, some of you may remember I have this MCU2P that doesn't work. Well, I think I've fashioned a way of getting it to work. I've put some paracord around the back, so I've got one working strap. And then if I push the mouse tightly against my face, it appears to pressurise. So, that means we can adequately test it. Maybe. <laughs> so, um... Obviously, I'm going to do the usual test. I'm going to have to try and keep this pressed against my face. I don't know how good the voice diaphragms or anything are in it, but if you wanted to just see the mask in use, even if it fails horribly, let's do it. Okay, and now I'm going to have to time that about two minutes, I guess. I'm not going to be able to actually look at my watch putting this mask on like this. Now... <laughs> I was starting to think, think this isn't quite an airtight seal because I'm already starting to smell a little bit of organic vapour. The air freshener. But not too much, so... Maybe it is kind of pressurised to my face? I don't really know. Um, but anyway, I'll talk a bit about the mask and if I'm not overcome with the smell it means it's working to an extent. So, this mask was made by MSA I believe and the idea was with this mask to basically make a mask that uh, could, I guess, offer some physical protection with this polycarbonate layer. But it was basically just designed so you'd have a good field of view and everything else. This is one of the masks that did replace the M17 or the M40. And both of those are much better masks than the M17. So this would normally have a six point head harness. Mine is missing the harness. If I find replacement straps, I might actually get them there. The mask seems to sort of pseudo work. And has some weird features because it has, I don't know if this comes off, but it has an extra XL valve sort of voice diaphragm on this side, voice diaphragm. There's a voice diaphragm in the middle where you can plug a voice amplifier into it, and it's got a drinking tube at the bottom. But uh, it's a bit of a weird mask, isn't it? Especially because under this polycarbonate layer, I don't know if there's an easy way of taking this off, there's this sort of soft rubber underneath and that soft rubber is designed to I think be able to even push your face into rifle scopes easier and things like that. If I hold the mask tightly to my face uh, it does seem to actually um, stop the smell coming in but it's very difficult to do without actually having a working strap system on the mask so uh, yeah. Overall though, I think if the straps work, this would be quite a cool mask, especially with how good the field of view is on it. And the fact they did kind of think of a way you could get it to work with a rifle scope system. <coughs> okay. um, I think that stuff is getting to me a bit now. Yeah, it's sort of bugging me up, making me feel a bit snotty and uh, crap. So, maybe that air freshener is working. <laughs> Let me just try definitely breaking the seal. Yeah, that smells a lot stronger, so something's okay. Either the filter's on its way out, which could be the case, because I've used this in a lot of tests, or the mask not having a good seal is getting to me, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, uh, let's end this test here, and we'll just talk about the mask a little bit more when it's not on my face. Mm. Yeah, that stuff did get down me a bit. It didn't work as well as my homemade gas mask, so uh, that's not a good sign. But that is because the strap system is mostly screwed. As I said, I just put a bit of paracord there so I could keep it on and then try and push it against my face. With the cap in, it does definitely make an airtight seal if I can just demonstrate that again. The funny thing is, when I try and breathe in, it will hold itself onto my face. And then, of course, as soon as I uh, actually exhale and, uh, you know, the pressure goes, the mask drops off my face. But, um, yeah, if we have one of these in working condition, I think MSA is still making a Millennium series that are a bit different. But, same idea. This has got quite a lot of innovative features. The polycarbonate style shield, so it's like having a little riot helmet thing on. Now, it clips on somehow, but I'm not actually entirely sure if there's an easy way to get this to unclip from the mask. Because if there was, I'd love to have a look at the... Uh, you know, mask without this clip on. Let's see if I can get it off. Oh, I think it's coming a bit. Oh yeah, I'm getting this off, okay. 
It's also held on by some sort of band. There we go. All right, that's off. So what you've got here, some sort of polycarbonate, hurts a bit, a uh, riot kind of thing on the front. And then the mask has this really interesting squidgy stuff. Uh, and the idea is behind this, from what I've read, is that it's kind of like a flexi thing, almost like some sort of see-through silicon, I guess, uh, that's designed so you can actually use like scopes and things of the rifle and lean into it. The issue being, because I haven't got a proper strap system, I can't really test like iron sighting and canting and everything into it, but yeah, it's sort of discoloured a bit to look a bit orangey, I think. I don't think they're normally this orange uh, by default, but yeah. If this was in good condition and was actually working, this does seem like a very cool design mask. Uh, oops, pull that one up. But yeah, um, the mask itself is fairly good. It's just that, you know, it's a shame that my one's broken, but as I've said before in other videos, um, the issue was because I'm in the UK, and a lot of people think it's the UK has an import ban, no, it's the US has an export ban. And it basically was designed around the Cold War, I think, to stop people sending stuff to the Soviets or the Chinese for backwards engineering. They have a rule where selling army surplus outside of the States is a criminal offence, uh, so you can get done for doing it. Because people keep going, oh, I could just send you something. Don't. Don't try it. Um, but yeah, it's basically, in the UK, sometimes American masks will turn up on the UK eBay. No idea how they've got here, I don't care. But at that point, they're legal for me to buy, and I'm not putting anyone in danger trying to buy it. The issue is I can't do that if they're currently in the States. So getting a hold of quite modernish American military equipment is fairly difficult. But this thing is interesting. It's got the two voice diaphragms. When I review the footage, I'll see how well they work. But I don't actually think they're particularly good. That's why it's got the voice amplifier sort of thing for it there, which I haven't got plugged in. You've got a drinking tube system in there. Obviously, you've got your 40mm filter input on the left. I don't know if this is one of those masks where... As I was saying, there's some way of taking off these uh, voice diaphragms and then you can actually have that as a secondary filter port because it kind of looks like it could be. I'm just going to have an experiment. Bear with me a moment. Now, I had a quick attempt with some pliers, but other than scratching some of the black plastic coating off of the metal, I've not done anything. Uh, but looking inside, the entire deflector system and everything is set up differently for that side than it is for this side, so I don't think that does move, I think it's a bit like the S10 where one side is fixed on and then you either have the mask bought in the left or right hand shooter configuration, it's not the cool adjustable one like a CT12 or whatever but regardless, this is a cool thing if it worked um, and I wouldn't mind trying to get some more panoramic lens masks because I've got this which doesn't really work so I can't fairly review this I've got the um, Scott GSR, which I don't like, and I've gone into the reason several times. I know some people do like it, personally I don't. It's over-engineered and bulky in my opinion. Uh, I've got the BEM 4GP, which is okay, I guess, which is a panoramic lens, but I don't really have too many other masks with the sort of panoramic lenses. So, if I see some cheap, I might prioritise trying to get uh, either industrial or sort of military masks that have the big lenses like that. Um, and if I can then that might be a good thing to look into to try and do some more comparisons with iron sights compared to things like the S10 or the SHMS but as this thing stands this could be really cool but unfortunately uh, mine with the dodgy strap system doesn't quite work but maybe if I can get replacement straps at some point I will because uh, using a bit of paracord and holding it to the face has been somewhat promising but overall yeah interesting mask Sadly for me, it doesn't work.